Hi, and welcome to part one of our two-part tutorial on preferences. Uh, we've divided the preferences tutorial into two parts because we do have a lot of options in the program, and we want to describe them in detail to you. Um, but uh, the program has been developed over 15 years, dealing with a number of stock houses and different search engines, and um, it's been developed to be able to adapt to those different needs. So. Uh, we hopefully you will have the same flexibility in uh, creating your keywords for your different clients. So to start with, let's uh, go to Preferences. You go to File Menu Item and go to Preferences. Or if you want, you can do Command Comma. As Part 1, we're going to deal with just the general um, options here. And uh, to begin, you get to be aware that when you put your cursor over the um, the label, uh, it shows a little synopsis of what each um, option does, so you can uh, learn about it that way. Now, the first option is a very important one. It's the vocabulary option set to singular and plural. Let's go over to vocabulary, and we'll go look at a word. And you notice that the words are set in three columns non-repetitive, singular, and plural. Um, when you've set this option, that's telling the program which keywords you want to use to attach to your image. It is The default is singular and plural, because that's what most search engines use now. That's what Getty and Alamy use. And basically, it takes both the singular and the plural terms as keywords. If instead, you can also use just singular, just these words, and that's for search engines that take off the plural endings of words and just need the singular words to search on. Uh, the final one is non-repetitive. This is uh, for, key, for search engines that stem words, that is, take the ing or ed or uh, off, uh, endings off of words and just search on the base word. They also don't allow re repetition of the same word being used twice in the database. They're concerned about saving space it's an old, outdated kind of search engine, but we keep it here just in case you come upon it. You'll be able to adapt your keywording to it. All right, now the second option, we want to go into keyword entry. And you see how the keyword entry is set up so that you methodically go through each image and make sure to put in everything that's in the, in the picture. Now, if you do not want to do that, and you say that I'm not interested in that, you can click on Enable Freestyle Keywording. When that is clicked on, and you go to Keyword the Next Image, then it doesn't fill in these fields, um, and it doesn't, um, you're not uh, hemmed in by the requirements of the keywording, you can just enter whatever words um, you want to enter and then you just go on to the next image. All right, the default color entry is when freestyle keywording is not enabled, then whenever you keyword the next image, the black-white color um, field is filled in with whatever is in here. Now, if you're doing, say, a batch of sepias, then you might change that to sepia, so every time that you keyword an image, sepia will appear here. Now, the next one is method for going to the next image, and that describes um, where in the grid you're going, the cursor is going to remain as you go to the next record. Right now, it's go to field with matching contents, so I'm in the bride and groom field, and when I go back to the next the previous one, it goes to that the, the first column where bride and groom is, and then goes to the second column in the second image. Now, if I go to instead go to first open field, that means when I go to another record, it goes to the first open field. And when I do go to same row, that means if I'm in the second field, when I go to the previous image, I'm going to stay in the second field. Uh, the next option is scroll speed. You can make it go very fast, which is smaller number, or slow, which is the higher numbers. And the scroll speed is set for when you can scroll through images, and you can tells you how fast you want to go. And then the next option 
is the number of images to scroll down in the film strip. You see that there are 11 images here in the film strip. So we set it to scroll down 11 so you can just see all your images. If you want to set it to another number, you can set it to 5. And then when I go to see the next, then go see the next 5 images instead of um, instead of 11. The next option is copy, copy captions when copying keywords, tongue twister. And when you do that, uh, when I go, let's go back up here. When I go and copy words, f from, keywords from a previous image, if I have that option set, I will also cap copy the caption. So we say that, and I say yes, and it brings in the, the caption too. All right, create captions with keywords. That's an option that's going to be in the enterprise version of the program, so we won't deal with that now. Default export method, tab delimited text or IPTC data. Um, this is for when you process your images and you want to export them out. You can export them either as a tab delimited file or as IPTC data. Um, and that just, when you'll be given a um, screen where you can choose which one uh, to do and that the default just comes up as the first option for you. But you can also always choose to do either one, export to the tab or to the um, IPTC fields. Uh, export the caption, the photographer's name, and the category. These are for to create columns within your um, tabbed file and if you and the, so that the, so that the category is its own column. You can see here in this tab file, we have the file name, then the photographer, then the caption, and then the category, and then the keywords. And you can, in the um, preferences, you can choose one or the other, or none, or however you want to do it. Show validation message. When I'm in the um, program, and I put in a word that doesn't belong in that um, column, it's not in that category, and I tab through, I get a little message that says helpful belongs in emotions and concepts. Would you like to move it there or clear it? So I move it and I move it over. Now what you can do in preferences is you can take that off so you no, no longer get that message. We make that the default that it does, it is checked so that you're not, new users aren't confused when things start moving around in the screen. The next one is show associated word box, and that's these words up here. If I don't want to see those words up there, I can check this off and they disappear. Because I can also see these words um, by putting my cursor on top. I can see the associated keywords with them. All right, so that's our pr uh, part one, and uh, then we'll get on to part two on the next page. Thank you very much.